Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Here's the question for us today that we're gonna, we're gonna look to the book of Proverbs to learn from. The question is this, if you have children, do you love your children? Do you love them? If you have grandkids, do you love your grandkids? And everyone's response, of course, is, yes, of course I do. But listen to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24, and then answer that question again. Here it is. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Whoever spares the rod, whoever refuses to discipline their children, actually hates their children. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. So here's the question. Do you love your children? Really? Do you love them? Because there's stuff in our culture today that'll say, well, if you love your kids, you'll just understand that they're by nature good and wonderful and you don't discipline them. And I'm not talking about the kind of discipline. There's different theories on how you discipline. I'm not talking about anybody ever abusing their child. I'm not talking about that. And neither is the Bible. But the Bible says that discipline, and spares the rod has a sense of even sometimes physical discipline, done in the right loving way, is actually a gift to your children. So here's some lessons from this one short verse. Number one, if you don't offer loving and consistent discipline for your children, you're actually treating them in a hateful way that will ultimately harm them. And as a pastor, and as a person who's lived now over 60 years, I've seen it. Parents who do not take the time to consistently, lovingly discipline their kids, who aren't present enough to know what's going on so they can give guardrails and guidance for their children. And so, discipline is actually an act of love. And then this, if you love your kids, if you truly love your kids, you will think through and pray through and establish some kind of consistent discipline that they know is coming. With my three boys raising them, the question was not would they be disciplined, the question was would they get caught. If they didn't get caught, nothing would happen because I didn't know. But when they got caught, there was always discipline. We always talked about it, and then the discipline would happen, we would talk about it again, and we would always follow through. And so, in our culture, in a culture that questions if any kind of discipline is really right, we're at a time in culture where people can break laws that, that are on the book still, but there's no consequences. People can walk into a, a drugstore in town here, and I talked to some of the employees about this, and <clears throat> they can't figure it out, but people can walk in and steal $500 worth of stuff and walk out, and there's no consequences. That's the world we're living in, and some parents treat their homes that way. Well, the they, kid doesn't mean any harm, or the kid, uh, their heart is right, or, well, it's not going to happen that often. When they get older, it'll change. No, if they're not disciplined when they get older, it'll just get worse. And so, here's, uh, here's a little story from my own journey of parenting. Uh, we got a call one Saturday, we, Easter weekend night, late at night, like 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. One of our children uh, was out with his friends doing stuff after curfew and got in trouble. And we got a call from the police. Can you come pick up your son? And so we did. And when our son came home, we sent him to bed. The next morning we sat down. We talked about what was the appropriate discipline. And we gave him 30 days of restriction. He'd been caught by the police for doing something really stupid. It was summertime. So for 30 days, we said to him, uh, no TV, none of the stuff you like that's fun. Uh, he was, he was, he was uh, middle, late middle school age. And we also said to him that you're gonna be doing yard work every day. Man, our yard never looked better. And when it was all done, I said to him, please do something stupid again. Because our, I just want, I want constant yard care. I didn't say that, but it's like, you know, but, but he did chores for 30 days. And you know what? He didn't complain. Because he knew that what he did was really wrong and he got caught. And at the end of 30 days, he was, kind of, he was off restriction. One of his friends who he got caught with, his friend's mom called me and said, <clears throat> what are you doing to punish? And I said, well, why are you asking? She said, well, I'm trying to figure out what would be appropriate for my son. So I told her, she said, okay, we're gonna do the same thing. This is fantastic. Two days later, I'm out around town in Byron Center, Michigan, and I see this other kid out on a skateboard. And my, these were all my, my son's skateboard buddies. And so I actually called his mom. I said, oh, I wanna let you know, um, I know you did a 30 day restriction and, um, I said, I just saw your son out skateboarding in the middle of town, and so I'm guessing he's probably snuck out. And she said, well, no. Um, the first day he was so sad, and that second day he was so sad about being on restriction, I just told him he had suffered enough, and I let him go. I said, wait, you told him you were giving him 30 days of restriction, and after one and a half days, you gave in? And she said, well, it's just hard. I didn't want him to feel bad. 
And I actually took a breath. I said these words. The Proverbs talks about wisdom. Maybe I shouldn't have, but what came to my mind, I said it. I said, you know, right now you are your son's worst enemy. She said, what do you mean? I said, you, you did not follow through. You don't, I said, you clearly don't care enough about him to help him not walk down this road. She got angry at me, hung up on me, and never spoke to me again. I can't tell you the history of that kid, but I can guarantee you something. And, I, and this is my own, I'm not going to get into the details. He stayed getting in more and more trouble, which led to a really troubled life. It wasn't just that moment, but it was a parent who wouldn't love their child enough to set boundaries, have discipline, and stick with it. And so here's the challenge. If you're a parent, even if it hurts you to do it, even if it's hard for them, wise discipline, follow through, tender, loving, but firm and wise, and let God then work in the life of your child through that kind of care. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, my boys are in their 30s now, but I thank you that um, those years where there was consistent discipline, they weren't surprised by discipline, uh, that they understood that this was part of life. Uh, I pray now as they're raising children, as they're having their own families, Lord, that you would help them to do the same. I pray that for every parent, every grandparent, every person that brings discipline to a child, that it would be with love and with care, that it would not ever be abusive, but it would be firm and clear to help show your love to that child and to give directions and boundaries in this crazy world we live in. Help us to love our kids enough to discipline them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. If you're part of Shoreline, we'll see you Sunday at 9 and 11. If you're not part of Shoreline and you're not part of any church, get engaged in a local church. If you're local in Monterey, come visit us at Shoreline. If you're somewhere else, get online, learn about a church, and find a church that's biblical and that's going to challenge you to walk with Jesus. Have a great day.